in the panel, you guys mentioned that there's a horror episode <laughs> yes. coming out. And also, the episode that you showed had references to Final Destination. Yes. So, can you hint what um, what references the horror episode will be? Um, it's definitely on? a creature episode, like a monster episode um, involving an Alaskan creature that actually is a little different than its reputation. And so, we, you know, we always start with like looking at things about Alaska that can make amazing stories. And so when we were looking at this particular animal, there were things about it that we did not know. And we thought that's a great jumping off point for a horror story. And so we decided to just go all in on that. And then like some of the references though too are, it, it's sort of a pastiche of different references because there's a lot of people in the room who are horror fans and people, you know, drawing who are horror fans. So like from It Follows to, um, Friday the 13th, there's a yeah. bunch of different references in it that were really fun to work on. Shaun of the Dead, even Shaun though of that's, the dead. I mean, that's sort of horror comedy. Um, but yeah. yeah, there's a lot, I think, within it that uh, horror fans will hopefully catch and, uh, yeah. Yeah, you also seem to have fun just with movies in general. Like yes. that the episode that you showed also had a lot with three men and a baby. Yes, yes. So are there movies that you yet to incorporate that are on like your wish list of things that you want to sort of parody? Or... I mean, I, I think for us it's just like we you know uh, are just big movie fans in general and mm -hmm. genres i think you know starting even just with our bobs episodes when we were writing on bobs i think we wanted to lean into that a lot and so i think you know for us it's, i think we do find ourselves drawn to doing more genre type episodes and once we get in there it's like you know it just comes out naturally like all the references to the the movies that fit within it that we want to reference yeah and i think because honeybee and wolf are huge movie fans we can do it a little more because you know sometimes it could be something you're kind of pasting onto a show just because you like a movie or think it's cool yeah. but because honeybee and wolf are so into movies it comes about organically that they would refer to the movies or see the parallels between something going on in lone moose and a movie that they love so it's been fun to incorporate that because it is like in the age of streaming like you can see like it, it used to be you know whatever was at your like video store or whatever I'm old but like I love now that I can just find the most obscure stuff it's got to be on some streaming service somewhere and so I feel like your all of our movie knowledge is like higher than it used to be so it's fun to be able to have that background to like exploit it a little bit on the show yeah now in um in most animated shows the, the characters never age or really change it's like a reset with each episode yeah here we're actually seeing the characters grow over time so what was the decision to do that and why do you prefer to be able to to change over time i mean i think it's that thing where we're sort of we're doing hopefully a little bit of both where our, our characters aren't truly aging or or making you know huge changes but i think when you know you hope or you start working on a show and you want it to sort of feel like the characters evolve over time there's little ways to sort of push them out a little mm -hmm. bit you know each episode or each season and kind of um, giving ourselves um, the ability to do that's been really you know fun and I think I think for people that you know are fans of those shows too it's nice for them to sort of feel like they are seeing change in the character a little bit over time much like you know real people in your life you sort of they grow and, and uh, change a little bit. Yeah, we always stay in like sort of an what we call an eternal present. You know, we never actually age the characters, but you wouldn't. I think you'd lose people if you had a show on for you know what's now been for us five years for Bob's for fifteen years without seeing growth and change in the characters. I think people would maybe tune out of it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And so also, you're, you've expanded the universe a bit with bringing in um, Aunt Dirt last yes. season. So what was it like bringing Jane Lynch into the dynamic of the, the family? I mean, I'm a huge Jane Lynch fan, so just the fact that she said yes was like a mind-exploding moment because we knew we were going to have her in the show a lot and that this was a new recurring character that we were going to see all the time. So just getting to work with her, and it's so interesting to record her because she'll just nail it the first take. I mean, you have to get three but you don't need three necessarily so that's been great and then you know it was just fun to be like it felt like 
we never felt like anything was missing, but once we had come up with Antured and, and the episode had been written, it was like, oh, this is like somehow, like we didn't know this piece was missing, but once it was there, it was like, now this piece is staying forever. Cause she just adds that little like bit of anarchy and chaos to the Tobins who are all sort of a little nicer. That is fun and, and also gets other people drifting in her direction. And I think you'll see a bit of that in season five of people like getting in cahoots with Antur in a really fun way. And now I forgot the question and I'm just rambling <laughs> so I mean she's just she's just a fun sort of chaotic energy that I think is um it's hard to resist using you know having in every episode I think she's just she's so fun she's so funny and uh, I think it brings out different sides of our characters than we've seen yeah. so it's great to have sort of that new um dynamic for each person on the show yeah now you had mentioned t taking three takes. Now the cast had said you guys are back doing like table reads and mm -hmm. recording yeah. all together. Yeah. Has that made it a lot easier to um, to get what you want out of the show? With yeah. I mean, recording in person, there's no substitute, even though, I mean, I'm glad that we isolated during COVID, obviously for safety reasons, but it created a parallel that we didn't know existed of like, what would the world be like if you couldn't do jokes in person, talk in person, hear something out loud and hear an audience laugh. And it's like, I never want to do that again. You know what I mean? Like, I never want to uh, be isolated again in terms of now that we've been table reading again, hearing the laughs live and knowing what works and what doesn't work is so helpful. And then we get our characters in the booth together and we're able to have them improvise off of each other in the way that we always did in like early days of Bob's. We never really got to do that on Great North. Like COVID happened the first year. So we never really got to have have those experiences and now we did and it's just like it's it was fun before but now it's like you always feel a little, almost like you're high or like like you know being in person even just doing little things can make you like excited in a way that it didn't before we had had that other experience yeah and I think it's a great I mean I think I don't want to speak for our cast but I think it's been so fun to get to see them all be together and have that chemistry of doing the live reads and recording together there, there's sort of no there's no way to sort of replicate that unless it's really happening and it just adds this energy and dynamic into the records and the performances yeah. that it, it's you can't you can't tell exactly when it's not there but when it's there you can really see it. and so I think it's yeah. just added that energy back into the show and it's been really great now, in your panel, you had mentioned that there's some big loss coming. Yes. Uh, that's coming. Is there anything you can hit, talk about or hint about at other things that are happening in, that we can expect in season five? I mean, again, like there's a big change. There's a big change. And yes, something or someone is lost. Uh, but I think in a fun way that moves the show forward. Yeah, and then there's also some bigger changes happening for some of our characters. I think Ham uh, gets a little bit of a shakeup this season. Um, I think we get to learn a lot more about Aunt Dirt, her past, um, sort of how she interacts with the family. We get to see more of that dynamic. Um, and, you know, I think sort of continuing uh, a little bit more of sort of beef journey from season four, kind of continuing with that into five of him adjusting to, you know, having a romantic life and all of that. So there's a lot. I think there's yeah. some big things coming. And there's also an absolutely bonkers wolf episode with Will Forte where he goes on a local Alaskan reality show that's sort of like alone. And I don't want to say more of where it goes from there, but it's Will Forte doing like, I mean, almost like a one man show episode that is fully bonkers. We really wanted to show it here, but because of the writer's strike, we're on a different schedule. So it was only at animatic stage. It hadn't been, like the audio is not in and it hasn't been colored yet. We haven't got, taken it to color, so we didn't get to show it, but it's just a great, like Will Forte is like so incredible and has so much energy and like there's, it's just like beginning to end in a really fun way. So we're really excited about that one too. Now, has there ever been any of these ideas that are just so crazy that somehow you just say this is never going to work? And then... Sure, all the time. Sure, I mean, but again, it's like, I think we spoke this a little bit on the panel. I think there's like ideas that sort of come through and they don't feel right in the moment or the season. But I think a lot of times we circle back to big things that maybe felt a little, I mean, the wolf episode is a great example. It was probably a swing that felt a little maybe too big in like a season one or two, but now that it's landed in five, it feels like sort of the right time and place and energy. So I think, 
you know, we love having those sort of big episodes and, you know, whenever we can feel like we can make them work, we, we try to. Yeah, and it's like, it's a total writer's room thing that you go like, we're absolutely not doing this, but I just have to say it out loud. Like, literally last week I was like, we're not doing this, but I have to say it out loud. What if there were snakes on the boat? And it's like, we're absolutely not doing that. I'm one of the fucking showrunners. We're not doing that. But it's like you have to say it just to entertain it for one moment. What if there were snakes on the boat? And then you move on. And this is life. 